The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Nehemiah, chapters 1 and 2. Over and over, the Israelites promised to be faithful to God. But over and over again, they turned away from Him. At last, God allowed enemy armies to take His people captive and carry them off to Babylon, nearly a thousand miles away. After 70 years, God allowed some of his people to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple. But back in Babylon, now part of Persia, the rest of the Jews had made lives for themselves. In fact, a Jew named Nehemiah had become quite important. Greetings. I am cupbearer to the king. A cupbearer was like a bodyguard who checked to make sure that no one poisoned the king's food or drink. Nehemiah was likely a trusted advisor. Your Majesty. May I suggest the date pudding? But though it was nearly 150 years since the Israelites had left Jerusalem, Nehemiah's heart was still in his homeland. When his brother Hanani returned from his trip to Judah, Nehemiah had a chance for some news. Brother, how are the people left in Jerusalem? Some are still alive, but they're having a hard time. Oh no. The wall of Jerusalem is broken down. The gates have been burned with fire. People are ashamed. That's terrible. A city without walls could never prosper. The people would always live in fear of being attacked. I'm sorry to bring such bad news. No, no, I'm I'm glad you told me. Dismayed, Nehemiah sat down and wept. He couldn't even eat for several days. Instead, he poured his heart out to God. Lord, you are a great and wonderful God. See how your people are suffering. Please listen to me. I'm praying for the people of Israel. We Israelites have committed sins against you. We haven't obeyed the commands you gave to Moses. Nehemiah reminded God of the promise he made to his people. You said, if you people are not faithful, I will scatter you among the nations. But if you return to me, I will bring you back. Lord, please pay careful attention to my prayer. Give me success when I bring my request to King Artaxerxes. For four whole months, Nehemiah prayed daily to God. He knew before taking action, he needed to listen and prepare. At last, he was ready. Your Majesty. Anyone who came before the king was supposed to appear happy. But for the first time, Nehemiah allowed his true feelings to show. Oh, why are you looking so sad? May you live forever? Why shouldn't I look sad? The city of my people has been destroyed, and fire has burned up its gates. The king could have been annoyed and ordered Nehemiah to be punished, but God moved his heart. What do you want? Nehemiah prayed silently for the right words. Send me to Judah. Let me go to the city of Jerusalem. I want to rebuild it. The king frowned and glanced over at the queen. At last, he said, How long will your journey take? When will you get back? Precisely as many moons as are required. Fair enough. Dismissed. Nehemiah turned to leave, but he knew there was more he needed for the job. If it pleases you, may I take some letters with me? I want to give them to the governors west of the Euphrates River. Then they'll help me to travel safely. Mm, Done. Oh, and a letter to the caretaker of the royal park? So he'll give me logs for the wall and gates and a house? (laughs) What next? A whole escort of army officers and horsemen? That would be fantastic. Fine. All of it. Get on with it. God had given Nehemiah such favor with the king that he had everything he needed for his long journey to Judah. At last, Nehemiah had reached the city he dreamt of his entire life. Jerusalem. Though Nehemiah was overjoyed by the first glimpse of the city, it must have been difficult to see its crumbling, broken down walls. So much work to be done. But Nehemiah didn't tell anyone his plan at first. 
On a bright moonlit night, Nehemiah snuck out with only a few others to see the full damage to the walls. We have to know what we're up against. Nehemiah traveled by donkey. With a few trusted friends, they left the city through the broken valley gate. Let's head toward the jackal well. At last, Nehemiah got a clear picture of the devastation. Jagged piles of rock lay everywhere. The gates were gone with scorched gaping holes in their place. It's such a big job. Only God can do this. Nehemiah circled what was left of the wall, heading up the Kidron Valley and at last returning through the valley gate. The next morning, he called together the priests and nobles and officials. You know I've come to visit my people in Jerusalem, but that's not the only reason I'm here. Nehemiah gestured to the jagged remains of the wall, visible from where they stood. You can see the trouble we're in. Jerusalem has been destroyed. Fire has burned up its gates. Tell us something new. Come on, let's rebuild the wall of Jerusalem. Then people won't be ashamed anymore. Hmm, well, I mean, I mean, that's something to consider if you think about this. Our grandparents tried that years ago. But God has been helping me. He gave me favor with the king. He'll help us complete the work. So who's in? Well, me. I'm in. Me too. Let's start rebuilding. God moved the hearts of the people to help Nehemiah. And together they began the gigantic job of repairing the walls and gates of Jerusalem. <laughs>